We're Hassani and Danielle Pettiford, and we're a real couple with real problems who almost called it quits. I was very frustrated. I became very disconnected, very um, jaded and, and cold. We have four children going on 20 years of marriage, and we practice what we preach. Our mission, to change the way couples relate to one another and teach them the skills needed to improve the quality of their relationships. This, this is the Couples, Couples Academy, Academy Show. Show. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Couples Academy Show. My name is Sasani. And I'm Danielle. And we're here for another great morning. We are talking about this topic all week long, why I stay. We're in part three. Uh, the conversation has been getting good. Danielle wasn't with us yesterday, but she's back here today so that we can engage in an amazing way. Hope you're doing well. Let's jump into our rhythm and our flow. So wherever you may be at, let's acknowledge you folks. I do want to acknowledge you. So make sure that you first like, share and subscribe. Tell us where you're uh, tuning in from. And then on the second half of the break, we will acknowledge you. So we're going to jump right into today's topic. What you got well, for us? Well, 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 first, we want to acknowledge the fact that, that we have this event coming. Oh, right? yeah. The Audacity of Marriage, uh, July 15th through the 17th. Uh, people are registering. We only have a few slots left. So don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Get it. Get it. Get it. Go. That's right. It's two ninety seven. Uh, what an incredible price. So don't wait too late because you will miss out and we don't want you to do that. We want you to take full advantage because there's going to be some amazing things we, we do that particular weekend. And I do want to mention this. I want you guys to go to the website. The link should be down there in the description to check it out. Right. Because I know we're still wrapping up the end of this pandemic kind of thing. And, you know, folks are adventuring out big time. St states are opening. However, we do want you to know that we do have a, pro a COVID protocol in place and I want you to be able to check it out and see what it is so that you feel comfortable because everyone that I'm talking to says I am ready to get out and to connect with people and find my tribe and find my community and so that's part of what you get with this experience not only are you getting a transformational uh, weekend for your marriage but you're also connecting with your tribe and I know that it's hard to believe that you could go to a place and have a whole bunch of strangers around you and walk out of there with friends and family but that's exactly what happens. So go to the website, check it out, read our, our COVID protocol so that you feel comfortable and then get your ticket. There it is. All right, we're jumping into today's topic, why I cheated. Um, we've been giving you all types of points, all types of tips, all types of things to consider. But what about when you're in a relationship with someone and they don't seem repentant? They don't seem humble. They don't seem like they're ready to change course and become a better version of themselves. Matter of fact, they're noncommittal about their decision to stop. What causes someone to stay in those scenarios? Because we have that as well. And so we want to kind of unpack these reasons because some people stay in marriage uh, for a number of different reasons, even though there's no hope of the possibility of things getting better. And so one of the things that we hear all the time is, well, I, I love my spouse. Right. And as they say, love is a drug. Love is an incredible drug. And when you are in love or have a deep, deep, deep love with the person you're with, you will endure a lot. You know, it kind of makes me think of uh, agape love. And it talks about how, you know, uh, in First Corinthians chapter 13, it breaks down all the things that love is, all the things that love's not. But it says that it bears it bears a lot. Right. It's long suffering. And so oftentimes people find themselves in these situations and they're still in it because of a belief and a hope that one day things will get better. And that love keeps them packed in something uh, that doesn't work. And so what we're seeing is there's a one way transactional demonstration of love. And I say demonstration of love because love isn't more than a feeling. It is an action. So if the person who's unrepentant continue to do what they do, they're not demonstrating their love for you with their actions. Mm -hmm. So it's more than a feeling. And so we have to make sure that the love is 
uh, multi, you know, beneficial, right? So both of you are benefiting from it. And so that's why it's important to have these conversations because we know that many people engage in affairs because they're missing the in love emotional type feeling that was once there in the beginning of the relationship. And because they don't have a proper understanding of what it is, they venture off, not realizing that a mature love forms in that relationship. And if you're not aware of that, you may miss what you actually have searching outside for the relationship for something that already Already exists within it. So interesting reminds me of the Wizard of Oz. You know that story, how you had the scarecrow, you had the lion, you had the tin man, and they were searching outside of themselves for what they wanted. And once they got to the wizard, the wizard said, listen, everything that you were looking for was already in your own backyard. And so if you take the time to have a different perspective about what's really going on in your relationship, you may realize, wait a minute, it's not better outside my marriage. I can have whatever I want within my relationship. Absolutely. It makes me think of the trauma bonds, you know, that we don't know. And sometimes we are stuck in this emotional roller coaster where we think that it's love and really we're just bonded by trauma. And that's really some of the things that have to be broken off you where you are awakened to the reality of what love truly is, right? When you can acknowledge what love truly is, now you can kind of justify taking certain actions and putting things in place. I'm always saying, you know, it's important for you to set your own personal boundaries. When you have personal boundaries in place, now there's like a line in the ground that you cannot cross. And those boundaries should be steeped in the things that you value. And your value would be based in what you believe. God, you know, your spiritual belief system. And so when you have those things in place, you can feel good about, okay, this doesn't look like love to me. Okay. So what is it that I'm feeling? Why am I still bonded and connect to someone? Sometimes we need to look at that and observe the fact that we might be connected via trauma. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. And having boundaries, really, you're talking, you know, it's not just the love that you're not getting from your partner. Maybe you are long suffering and you endure and you have this high tolerance for pain because possibly a lack of love you have for yourself. And like, historically, I mean, I, we're always talking about this. Like when I remember going to a conference and someone was sitting next to me and she was saying to me, there was this book that she read that helped her understand why she's not emotional about things that have happened in her life and the things that happen around her. When someone dies, something bad happens, she's not emotional. It was because she came from such a deep-seated place of pain, her life. You know, she was raised mm. in an abusive home. She's gone through hell and high water. She's been through it. And so oftentimes, like you're saying, your stamina for pain is so much higher than others that you don't even realize you're in the pain, right? Somebody has to point it out to you. Hey, this mm. isn't healthy. What you're going through like no this isn't normal and no this doesn't mean that you're not being a loving person because you have a boundary right here and you're not willing to be treated any kind of way and that is a whole other thing that people need to deal with because now you're digging up the past and your, hurt and your trauma and your issues and healing those places so that you can begin to feel because you're so numb from the pain that's a excellent point mm -hmm. so you play out in your adulthood adulthood oftentimes what you've experienced in your childhood mm -hmm. so if love looked like this with mom and dad then guess what love plays itself out like this right. in my marriage and that's our whole isn't it everybody like that's every we talk about the marinade all the time and the marinade is basically just like when you barbecue and you put some steak in the marinade and the marinated uh, steak comes out full of all the flavors and things that it was steeped in. That's you. That's all of us. We are marinated through our family and our environment, our experience, our upbringing. And that's who we are. And we're bringing that into relationships. And this is why you have people who think that they know how to love. They'll say, I love you, but I love you. And then you look at their actions and everything is like, well, you acting like you hate me. Right. You behave that's like right. you have contempt against me. I love you, but I'm going to bust you in your eye. Right. I love you, but I'm going to cheat on you. Yes. I love you, but I'm going to disrespect you and call you out of your name. And then you receive it. Well, they said, I love, mm -hmm. they said, I love you, but yeah. look at their actions right. and you begin to justify and rationalize and yes. compartmentalize everything that's going wrong in the relationship because you don't have a healthy understanding of what love is. When you said, bust you in their eye, I got an image of the Tina Turner movie. Mm. Remember how I beat her down. Yeah, he beat her do down. Remember, do you remember the lip? Do you remember do. she was over here nursing her lip and then she's laying in the bed the next day and he just slides a huge, big old box a gift. gift on the bed. He loved her. That was that his was, expression of cause, love. Because even though I beat you down here, I he, love you. He beat her up and down. 
and then slit her a gift. And so these are the things that you listen. This is why we say the key to your marital restoration is your personal transformation. And when you take the time to separate yourself and just think and to contemplate and to pray and to surround yourself with wise individuals who can help you see what you can't or help you see what you refuse to acknowledge, it may help you have a better understanding of what you're dealing with in that relationship. So these are the reasons why people stay. Uh, We're going to go further on the opposite side of this break. Stay right there. Welcome back, guys. You are watching the Couples Academy show, and it's welcome time. So I do want to welcome Frank from Mississippi, Vashon from Chicago, Jaguar from PA, Kat from Michigan, Rick from Ohio, Torre, good morning. Good morning, Jackie from Spartanburg, South Carolina. We got some Facebook, uh, we got some Facebook user from ATL, Jackie, good morning, DC from Alabama, Dee Dee Jones from South Carolina, Debbie from PA, LaShero, welcome. She she says, great morning from Greenville, Massachusetts. Thank you guys for your ministry. I appreciate this much. Love you guys. Thank you very much for that. Carol, good morning from Jamaica. We still haven't Jamaica. gotten there. We need an invitation. Invite us. We want to come to Jamaica. Come. Okay. Gorgeous. Good morning from Cincinnati, Ohio. Lorraine from Canada. Good morning. Uh, we got Treetop from Philly. Kind of my old stomping grounds. I used to work out there a lot. You know, we're from the East Coast. Eve from Barbados. Good morning. Lorraine says, what strategies do you recommend for staying present? How do you keep your thoughts present? And you know what? There's a scripture that I love. OK, and I got it pulled up for you. It's Second Corinthians 10, 5. It says casting down ima- imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Knowledge of God is key. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience Mm -hmm. of Christ. Now, why is knowledge the important piece? Because when you understand where your freedom lies, you will stop relying on others, right? The knowledge of God gives you the power and the understanding to move forward, even when your circumstances are jacked. That's why we talk about the peace of God that surpasseth all understanding. And so a practical thing to do, and this is what a lot of my clients do, we figure out a trigger. You know how triggers are usually something that's very negative, Mm. right? We're just emotionally triggered and we react. Well, Mm. I help my clients understand how to create a trigger that's positive. And so what we do is we create a keyword, some kind of a safe word to use to turn off the thought because it's only you who can do that. So when your imagination gets out of hand and you're thinking about negative thoughts and you keep going to the path you need a a safe word it could be nope (laughs) my clients love nope right as soon as the thought comes nope and you put a new thought in there it's replacing the first thought with the negative thought okay that's powerful. Welcome, and if, you, if you do that consistently, you'll begin to see a shift oh, in the yeah. way it, that you it, think. It creates a routine. For yeah. you. So you, it's almost like you're creating a new neural pathway yes. for your mind that now you automatically have the ability to flip the switch and change the thought. And that's really how it goes. Retraining the brain. Mm-hmm. That's what it's ultimately all about. All right. Let's go to the second point. We're talking about why we stay. All right. Well, we have history. Yeah. I mean, we've been together since we were you know, I don't know, in high school, high school sweethearts, Mm. right? We have children. um, We have experiences. um, We've been through a lot. Yeah. Uh, You know my family. I know your family. Oh, my gosh. Um, I don't know. You're the one that that, that I've been with half my life. You know, for for this to end, it would almost be like me cutting my arm off, leaving it on the ground and walking away. There's a oneness that has been formed over a period of time. Let me just give you this analogy real quick on that point. There are some things that Hassani and I have experienced together. I can look into the optical lens of your eye 
And you know what I'm talking about, the moment of hilarious laughter. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. I do. Now, we could just think about this moment and just fall on the floor cracking up because of this scenario that we share. That is history. That is something that you can't take with you to the next relationship. Exactly. This is why we're bonded. See, this is see these trauma bonds go deeper than that. The history that I have with you, the memories and experiences that I have with you, the book of pictures that I have with you is a reason for me to not let go because when I let that stuff go, I don't have that anymore. I don't have that same shared connection with anybody else. I can't look at anybody else's optical lens and know what I know about this one and that is a really powerful reason why people overlook the hurt and the pain and the trauma and stay because of fear of losing their history yeah, yeah. that's and, huge and, and you know a part of that history we call it your marital timeline and on that marital timeline there are seasons when everything's going well it's all good we're loving life we're enjoying each other we're in a connection we have a vibe and then you face other seasons of hardship and so when you're in the hardship phase you begin to think about the seasons when things were going well. We talk about seasons all the time, summer, winter, spring, fall. And so in your relationship, you have up and downs, right? You have mountains and you have peaks. And so when you're in a peak, right, when you're in a, I'm sorry, when you're in a, a, a valley, excuse me, when you're in a valley experience, you begin to remind yourself about the peaks, the mountaintops, and that's what you're hoping for. And so you're willing to endure and you're willing to stay because to start all over from scratch is a painful thing. You you know, it, it, Danielle, I think we talked about this before. Remember Infinity Wars? Mm -hmm. Remember the movie, if anybody mm -hmm. you saw Infinity Wars, where all of a sudden people started disappearing? Like literally they started to d disappear into nothingness. Yeah. And, and, and when you divorce, right, and that relationship is over, it, it's almost like all of those memories, all of those things begin to disappear. The children you had together in your marriage, not that they're disappearing, but you get my point. Like everything begins to dissipate into to nothingness and line. you're left with nothing that, that yeah like you know that's so powerful that's such a great analogy i hope you all get that and saw that because it's like the timeline of your history it dissipates and goes away it's not like you don't have the memories right but there's just that connection that you have with that person that you will no longer have and so sometimes we have to get into the mindset it's like the pros and the cons yeah. you know like you have to actually look at understand love number one and look at what's really going on to determine okay am i just holding on to this because i'm afraid of losing my history mm. is that is that really what it's all about because that is a really big thing and not only is it your history but it's the legacy of your future that shifts as well. Boom, which transitions into the next point. You're talking about future. I can't see life without that person. Mm -hmm. Like, because you've been a part of my last 15, 20, 30 years, I can't even, I can't even imagine what life looks like. It's like, I'll deal with the struggle. I'll deal with the ups and downs. I'll deal with the fact that you get on my nerves and all these other things. But I'd rather have that and have you than not have you because I don't know what's waiting for me on the other side. I don't know what the possibilities may be for my life. And so for all that we've done and all that we've had and all that we've accumulated and all that we've built up together for that just to go away, I can't even mm -hmm. in my mind process what right. this even looks like. Right, because look at, you've been with this person for so long. Your life is shaped around that person. You ever see a couple that's been together for so long they start looking alike yeah that actually even happens with somebody who is by themselves and has a pet they start looking like their pet <laughs> because that's who you're around and your life and your habits become shaped around that person it's almost like a puzzle piece right you have become so like entwined with that yeah. person that to break it is such a broken yeah. place. It's almost like losing half of you, even though you're in the midst of trauma. The idea of breaking away from that person breaks half of you because mm. literally you have become one. It is scriptural. See, the Bible is so practical to me. It's not some hocus pocus story. It's very practical. The two become one. And you can see how that happens mm -hmm. in real life mm -hmm. and why when you have to make this decision to, to leave or to stay, you have to consider this oneness becoming uh, this 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 duo becoming one. And now what's left of me? How will I rebuild the other half of myself? That's so powerful. Like, guys, I, 
I, I we're talking about this to get inside of the mind of the person who stays because there's some legitimate reasons in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the distractions, the mm-hmm. disaster, the destruction mm-hmm. that has taken place. These are the bonds, the glue that 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 creates that stickability in these relationships. And because of these things, you're willing to do whatever it takes to go through a process of restoration because of the hope and the possibility of what can be. So listen, we got one more segment. We got uh, more points to talk about. We want to hear from you. Let me just, Danielle, I just saw somebody pop in who said that they're from the Netherlands who's with us today. So we're glad to have you this morning. Listen, we'll be right back in just a second. See you then. Academy is expanding its team to meet the growing demand of people in need of help around the world. So if you're a trained, licensed, or certified expert in marriage enrichment, infidelity recovery, sex therapy, life coaching, cognitive behavioral therapy, divorce mediation, financial coaching, or family therapy, contact us today. Welcome back, family. You're watching the Couples Academy show. And real quick, I just want to talk to you about the Moving Forward program, which was one of the commercials you just saw. If you don't know, the Moving Forward program is a comprehensive program. It's six months of me and Hassani supporting you, holding your hands, moving through whatever the trauma is in your marriage. It could be infidelity. It could be just brokenness in communication, brokenness in any way in your relationship, and you're stuck and you need to move forward. And it comes with our program, which is a platform. And it has six modules with really deep dive content that allows you to dig into your marriage and rebuild. It starts you at ground zero, where you're at, where you come into the broker program and builds you up for six months. We get on the phone with you or actually we get on Zoom with you every week to help coach you through. It comes with sessions for you to get some some coaching sessions. It's a powerful program. So if you're struggling in your marriage, you don't have to. This is a program that you can partly do on your own, but you get some support from us too. So check that out. And it comes with quarterly master classes. Oh, yes, it it comes with That's live right. events like the, the one we're having in That's July, true. the Audacity of the, the Audacity, Audacity of, of Marriage, marriage Retreat. Conference yes. actually comes with the program. So if you were in the Moving Forward, uh, forward program, you would have gotten that for free. So check that out. It's lots of opportunities there. But Hassani, can you go to some of these comments? Ooh. Because people are talking. Oh, about yeah, yeah. Time. Okay, 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 okay. All right. So we've got D'Angelo. The bond, the experience is why it's hard to accept excuses for the spouse who has been hurt. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, also says, wow, the Avengers analogy was powerful. You know what? I'm going to pull that up tomorrow. So when you tune in tomorrow. Tomorrow. It's so powerful. Like when I, I don't know, I don't know what made me, we were just talking and organically the thought came to my mind and I'm like, wait, remember that scene? Uh-huh. And it fits so perfectly. So we'll make sure that we show that tomorrow. Zay says, do you guys believe in standing for marriage after divorce? Mm. Well, okay. So let me just say this. That's a loaded w- question. W- once you're divorced, you're divorced, uh-huh. right? However, However, there is a, I think 15% of all divorces actually remarry. Mm-hmm. And so we have participated in 
helping to restore relationships, and we even participated in facilitating the actual Mm -hmm. marriage. So if a matter of fact, it's so interesting that you're asking this. There's a couple right now who reached out to us two days ago. They're technically divorced, but they have a desire to restore it. Uh, The reality is they realized they did it too quickly. They didn't go through a process. They were in their emotions. They filed paperwork, and now they're in a space where did we make the right decision? And they were thinking about their kids and thinking Mm -hmm. about their lifestyle and thinking about everything that they have. That's when two people actually want to reconcile, but there are cases where it's only one person that's standing in the gap, and that is a thing. There are support groups out there. I've had clients who actually were members of that support group, and it is a serious spiritual walk to do that, right? That's not to say that it can't happen, but when somebody has divorced you and moved on, remarried, is with someone else, it's 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 a heavy burden yeah. to bear, and you really got to have your spirit walk right to know what the Lord is leading you to do and saying to you so that you can have something to stand on. Because if you're doing this on your own, you don't have any support, no counseling, and you don't even hear, you don't even have a word from the Lord. You're just doing something. You're really out there, right? You Absolutely. Need to really get some grounding, some spiritual leading in there, and just be hearing from the Lord. And V says, "Wow, that's a great message. You are actually ministering to me. Never saw it in that light. Where two become one, and having to rebuild." the other half of you, food for thought deep. Well, we're glad that we're able to give you some food that you can chew on uh, and hopefully it tastes good. All right, we got a couple more. Um, hey, I'm financially dependent on my spouse. That's now this, one. that's a very common one. I mean, come on, it, it's self-explanatory. How many times do we talk to people who they are ready to go, they need to go, they wanna go, they don't wanna be in this relationship at all, they don't even like the person, but they are not financially stable, they don't have a job, they don't have their own finances at all. Mm-hmm. And so it's either about, I'm just sticking around because I can't do any better, or it's once I get my coins together, I'm out. Yeah. And hopefully in the in-between time, you two are able to reconcile. Like we tell you this all the time. Like a lot of times people come to us for counseling and they're like, the only reason why he wants to do it or the only reason why she's staying and considering it is because of the kids. If there weren't no kids, then he or she would have been out. Well, guess what? Thank God for the kids in that scenario. Okay, so the only reason why you want to be here is because you're financially tied. Well, thank God for the you financial need some struggle. Anger. You they're, need some they're, anger. They're, exactly. Right. There exactly. has to be something that's angering you so that you have hope to work on a better day. And that's the whole point. See, people people looking at it wrong, right? If there is no anchor, it's so easy to drift apart and to just abandon ship. But when there is anchor, there is the hope. We're looking for the seed of hope. And that's what it is. We're looking for anything. If, it's, if, if you're broke and you can't go nowhere, great. If it's the kids, great. Let's see what we can do to build from there. There it is. Wow. Let's go to the last one. And, you know, hopefully we have a couple minutes to unpack this. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I stayed is because I'm afraid. So many people are soaked and saturated in fear that it stifles them from being able to do anything. What are some of the things that people are afraid of? Afraid of starting over and what that looks like? Afraid of believing that there'll never be anybody else? The fear of the unknown. That's just an encapsulating it all, the fear of the unknown. And fear is what false evidence appearing real, right? So fear in and of itself is all stuff that we're projecting from the inside, right? It's not necessarily a real thing. This is stuff that you project into the world mm-hmm. so you stay stagnant because of the fear of, and you can fill in the blank. Fear that I won't be able to take care of myself. Mm-hmm. Fear that I'll never find love again. I mean, there's all types of things that people struggle with, all types of insecurities that people have within them that keep them in their space. So, okay, fine. While and see, this is why that individual work is so critically important, because if you become a slave to your fears, then you will live a very limited life. But when you overcome the fear, the fear that you have about yourself, the fear that you have about your relationship, it puts you in a better position. So when you do make decisions, they're made from a better premise, a healthier premise. See, when you are unhealthy, any decision you make is going to come from an unhealthy place. And it may not ultimately serve you. But when you become healthy and you make decisions, it's in a completely different realm. And so this is why, yes, while you're working on the restoration of your marriage, you should be working on the transformation of your life. That's what's critically important about this whole process. And when that happens, you no longer have to live in any type of fear. 
Um, Sarah says fear that he will find somebody else. Right. So if you're you're staying because you believe, well, if it's over, he may find somebody else. And I don't I, I can't imagine you being without somebody else. I want you to be with me. So there's all types of things, guys, all types of things. But but the reality is uh, we want you to stay for the right reasons, not the wrong reasons. But if you have the quote unquote wrong reasons, what are you doing in the in between time to make sure that things get Right. We're talking about why I stayed. We have one more episode. Tomorrow's part four. We're going to go deep. Uh, and so we hope that you stick around. Listen, if you've been enjoying the series, uh, let us know if there are other areas, other topics of the subject matters that you want us to delve into. Let us know. This is our gift to you. This is our service to you. We want to make sure that we're meeting you where you're at. You've been watching the Couples Academy show. We love you guys and we see will tomorrow, see you guys. in the a.m. Take care.